Hey, so thanks for coming out to the channel. Uh, I'm here in Panama and I want to tell you about the first live broadcast I'm going to be doing uh, on YouTube uh, from Giza next week. We're going to Egypt. I'm taking a team of researchers. Uh, we've got some very exciting things to, uh, to check out. I think I've made some, some major discoveries on the, uh, the Giza Plateau. You know, it's hard to believe that that has existed for 4,500 years and that everything hasn't been exhausted. You'd think everything would have been studied. And it's really been amazing to me that I have been able to find things that, that apparently others haven't. So, uh, you know, one of the things is I found some pointers on the east side of the Great Pyramid. Uh, John Romer, the Egyptologist, talks about how they used the east side of the Great Pyramid as a blueprint, a life-size blueprint, to keep the thing in check as it was going up. And I have found that there's a lot of other pointers there that seem to indicate important things, not just to help them keep it going straight, but to help us, the researchers, to get it straight, to get it right, to get the messages they're giving us. One of the pointers that I found actually points to where I am right now in Panama. You know, behind me is uh, part of the construction of the Panama Canal, one of the greatest uh, modern construction projects in history, just like the Great Pyramid of Giza was one of the, you know, the only wonder of the ancient world still standing, one of the great construction projects of history. And what we found is that there are pointers inside the Great Pyramid that link megaliths around the world. Now, many people have said that the megaliths around the world are linked. It's one of those mysteries that, uh, that demands explanation. But this is going farther than that. This is not just saying that uh, you know, Stonehenge is linked with uh, Teotihuacan, is linked with Tiwanaka. This is saying that inside the Great Pyramid, there are pointers to these things. I've never discovered that before until this find I had this past week. So we plan to do some, uh, some videos about that, but just think about where I am here in Panama, which is a major thoroughfare now, obviously, in the modern world. You know, the Panama Canal did such an interesting thing. It took a single continent, you want to call the America a single continent, and cut it in half, but it two, two, took two separate oceans, the Atlantic and the Pacific, and joined them together. So something that joined together two great bodies of water separated a single landmass. And the pointer that comes out of the Great Pyramid goes directly from Giza to Panama, and then from Panama straight south to Peru. As it, now, they could have just drawn a pointer straight through to Peru. In other words, they knew where Peru was, but it seems to be showing that they knew how to, to boat here. Because you would have gone to Panama, and then before the canal, You'd, there would be the shortest place to, to, uh, to portage. And it was probably a route used for that because, as a matter of fact, if you study the history of when they were going to build the Panama Canal and all the different routes they looked at in Nicaragua and Colombia and other places, how there was legends that this one, which was eventually built, had been you know, anciently traversed. And uh, it's interesting that uh, the, uh, the, where the pyramid was cut, uh, was the, the place of the first transcontinental railroad. So you got the first transcontinental railroad. Of course, it's pretty short. You know, it's the shortest distance probably across a continent anywhere in, in Panama, but it was the first transcontinental railroad, and it, and it sort of followed you know, these ancient signals. So if, if I'm reading the Great Pyramid correctly, they had a, they had a, a line of, uh, of travel, not just a line of sight, because they would have gone straight to Peru with a the line. They went to Panama and then down to Peru. Very interesting. Uh, I've been working with uh, one of our AIP associates, Bob Criley, a very talented engineer, and uh, he and I have been going gangbusters and discovering things inside the Great Pyramid. But the main reason I'm, I'm making this today, here while I'm in Panama getting ready to leave uh, for, for Giza, is to just uh, give a heads up that I'm going to be doing a live broadcast uh, from Giza, my first one on this channel, and I want to be begin promoting it. So. Uh, I'll put the date in the comments below. I still haven't exactly determined the date and the time, but, but I will soon. And so I want, I'm just going to ask you to join that if you want to sort of follow along with us on our uh, research adventures in Giza. Uh, we plan to go to the Bent Pyramid, the Red Pyramid uh, in, in Saqqara. Uh, we hope to go to Abu Ghraib. We're going to uh, obviously go all over the Giza Plateau and uh, we're gonna check out uh, some very interesting things. So thanks for watching, stay tuned, follow us, our research team going to Giza uh, the 23rd through the 29th of February. And remember the 29th is leap day. 
So the day we'll be there, that, that last day we're, we're finishing our research, is the day related to the precession of the equinoxes and the uh, imperfect year, you know, 365 and a quarter days. And so you got to make up that into a full day every four years. So we're going to get a free day this year, 2020, uh, 366 days instead of the 365. And that leap day, uh, we're going to be doing some special research too. So plan to join our live broadcast. Uh, please leave comments below. Tell us what you think you'd like to see. And uh, I just appreciate you watching. Thank you.